So what is the mechanism of this reaction? Well, the first thing that kind of jumps at me right away that we start with an epoxide and we finish with an epoxide. But if before our epoxide was at the beginning of the molecule, now our epoxide is in the middle of the molecule, what's going on here? Well, let's take it one step at a time and try to figure out what the mechanism for this reaction is going to be. Since we are working with the cyanide over here, which is a very good nucleophile, and we have chlorine and the epoxide, which are good electrophiles, the most reasonable initial first step here is going to be the nucleophilic attack. There are, however, two different options that we can pursue here. One, where the cyanide attacks our epoxide and opens it, and another option where the cyanide attacks the atom with the chlorine and kicks that one out. Both of which are going to be SN2 attacks. And as SN2 is extremely sensitive towards the steric hindrances, the first attack is going to be more likely than the second one. So if I go with this attack, the intermediate that I am going to get here is going to look something like that. Now, in this case, I ended up with the O-, which is a nucleophile, and we have this chlorine that is a living group, meaning that the carbon to which chlorine is attached is an electrophile. And since my nucleophile and my electrophile are right next to each other, I can immediately perform a second nucleophilic attack like so, kicking the chlorine out and reforming my epoxide via this intramolecular interaction. And look at that, we ended up with our final product. <laughs> Noise. 